This uh, year of 2016 is, of course, the centenary of the 1916 Rising. Um, a poem of mine was published on Easter Saturday of this year uh, in the Irish Times, and I, I'd like to read it. And it concerns, in a way, uh, the intersection of private and public memory. Uh, it's set in Collins Barracks, uh, in the National Museum, that is, Collins Barracks, where I had gone to see the, the flag of the rising, not the tricolour, but the, the Irish Republic flag, which was made in a hurry at, at uh, Liberty Hall uh, just before the rising. <coughs> um, it's also a reflection on my aunt, Annie Cody, who died before I was born, died at the age of 19, a beautiful girl and a singer, and who through sheer chance happened to be in hospital in Dublin as a young girl of maybe 12 or 13 when the rising broke out. Um, that's a part of my family tradition. The year before that, in 1915, Annie had sung at a concert in the town hall in Carrick and Shore in aid of the local men who were in the, on the, tren in the trenches in, in France but she happened to be in Dublin the following Easter when the rising broke out. So it's about um, that coincidence about the flag itself and about the public and the private touching. Uh, the title is, is a quote from the song uh, by Thomas Moore uh, about the children of Lear. Silent or moil. A sweet bell ringing at the National Museum, Collins Barracks. Stooping towards the case that holds the Easter flag unfurled over the GPO, I see myself reflected in the glass, and out of that, recalling the image of a girl whose kin dissolving and transposed to a night in November 1915 when her father leads her on violin into the song by Moore, telling of Lear's lonely daughter in a town hall concert to send out some Christmas comforts to the Western Front. A frail girl singing in a minor key, Annie Cody sends her song into the dark, above the gathered heads and hearts of a town beside the shore. When will that day star, mildly springing, warm our isle with peace and love? When will heaven, its sweet bell ringing, call my spirit to the fields above? By chance she's in a Dublin hospital as Easter's terrible beauty breaks. The family in Tipperary frantic for news of her to counter rumour of revolution, German invasion, the city shelled. When Maytime mopping up is done with firing squad, quick lime, frongoch, Annie is well enough to be sent back home to Tipperary, her illness gone to ground until she's 19, and then forever taken from her brother's arms, as he, who will be my father, will be from mine in years to come. Here now, under glass, mute eloquence of object, the flag of the Republic, fashioned by the shirt-maker Mary Shannon in the cooperative at Liberty Hall, on Connolly's orders hoisted above the GPO, as Pierce proclaimed the words below. Taken by the British when Easter week seemed done, then, after fifty years, returned from the Imperial War Museum. Part torn, but larger than imagined, and of a stronger weave. Irish Republic, lettered in white and orange, on a vibrant ground of emerald green. A photograph beside it here has a score of British officers at ease in swagger sticks and arrogance of empire that outflanks the setting sun. 
posing with the rebel flag in Sackville Street, on the plinth of a new monument repudiating behind their unseeing heads the right of any man to fix a boundary to the march of a nation. There, at Parnell's feet of bronze, imperial victors of the hour, frozen by the lens in black and white a century ago, look towards the unformed future, brandishing insurgent green in mock ritual tableau, more prescient of what's to come than they could know. I am of that future in the here and now that finds me gazing through the glass and all it gathers in around the woven cloth on show, those dead imperial soldiers posing live with Mary Shannon's flag that survived all, the haunting cadence of Moore's song that tells of swan and star, transfiguration, love, and my father's sister, Annie, long gone, although still young and smiling from the frame by the doorway in our hall, a little life unsung, collateral to the general post office, the river sure, the Somme.